Well, good morning, everybody. We're gonna feed some cows this morning. We're gonna unroll a little bit of hay. And then I wanna to talk to you about how we're trying to build the soil here. There's a good cow and a good heifer calf coming along. So stay tuned and let's see what we can get accomplished.
So we just got this bale of hay unrolled, as you saw. And we are February 11th. Um, got some good calves coming. We should have a slew of calves here come another month, month and a half. Cows are in good shape. Look how good and fat this cow is. Real good shape. And they're uh, liking this coastal Bermuda grass hay. Look at this heifer. She is a dandy. Half South Pole, half Angus Cross. She's out of a really good cow. She's gonna make she's gonna make a good cow. Got another one, a match set that's just like her. So typical cow at the upper end needs about three needs to eat about three percent of her body weight a day. So a twelve hundred pound cow, which I'm gonna consider that probably the top end of these cows some of them might weigh a little bit more but most of them are going to weigh probably 11 to 12. the south poles obviously are um, smaller than that they're 900 to a thousand but let's just figure 1200 pound cow three percent of their body weight they're going to eat um, 36 pounds of forage a day and so i've probably got about 70 head here including the calves Here's that other little matched heifer calf. So I showed you the one bigger one. This one's a smaller one, um, just a few months old. So 36 pounds a day. So a 1,200 pound bale um, divided by 36 is going to be somewhere around 33, 34 head of 1,200 pound cows that will consume that bale in a day we've got close to 70 head here with the calves obviously the calves aren't going to eat that much but what i've been doing is putting out two rolls a day one in the morning and one in the evening so i try to make them clean it up fairly well but i'll admit i'm probably wasting a bit more than i should and remember that hay on the ground that's decomposing is not waste and I'm going to show you a place um, just over the hill I've really tried to be working on the fertility and I put down quite a bit of hay ie carbon and um, I've let the cows uh, eat it leave what the what they didn't want and then they've put manure all over it and I want to show you that little spot because it's really going to bloom here in another month and a half when it really gets warm and that those warm season grasses start to grow. So we're getting carbon down. We're increasing the organic matter of the soil. And we're trying to let the decomposing hay provide nutrients to the plant roots. Um, there's a lot of... of uh, nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium in this decomposing hay and again I brought this off of somebody else's hay field which doesn't rob my place of the nutrients it's going to increase the fertility of my property so we got a cow fight here cows are there's a pecking order and you got to know that they're gonna run at each other and they'll they'll duke it out there's always going to be some boss cows and then there's going to be some um, subservient cows so they'll get after each other and you don't want to be in the middle of one of those runs or they'll run you over and they could hurt you but look how good shape these cows are in there's some some of the south pole heifer calves i've sold that's a good one right there i like her a lot gentle cows and remember they are heat tolerant. They're called the southern mama cow. They're smaller frames, so they eat less forage than these big cows. Three of these south pole cows will produce three calves, and versus two of these 12 and and in some herds 15, 1600 pound cows will produce two cows. And you're just not gonna you're gonna dollar out at more per 
uh, across, at least across the scales at the at the sale barn, you'll dollar out more with those three calves, obviously, than the two, and you'll eat the same amount of forage. Those three 900 to 1,000 pound cows will eat the same amount of forage as two 1,500 pound cows. So I'm go gradually building my herd to try to get back to the smaller frame size and hopefully increase my stocking rate on this smaller place. Um, and that's kind of where I'm headed. So just wanted to see these cows, see how good a shape they are for mid-February. Um, they're doing well. They just got fed a brand new bale of hay. They'll go through this and here in another hour they'll all be laid down and chewing their cud and then we'll be ready for another roll this evening. So I want to show you just over the hill and so um, hang with me for just a second. A little bit chilly today. This little baby wants to cubby up in the hay here. This is about a week old baby. Got a really good mama. Snug as a bug in a rug. It's about 40 degrees currently. It's pretty windy, so the wind chill is probably down in the mid to lower 30s. But the cows are doing good. They don't seem to mind the cold at all. So this is just over the top of the hill. And you can see I've unrolled hay um, going down this hill. This part of this property up at the top here is super sandy. Didn't have any organic matter in it. And the fertility um, was very low, just wouldn't grow much. I unrolled hay here during Snowmageddon two years ago and it really, really made a difference in the grass growth up here. Obviously you can't tell it this time of year um, because the grass is dormant. You can see what's happening here. This hay is decomposing and it looks a little thicker than you would think can decompose appropriately to let the grass shine through and, and, and start to grow. But here once it warms up this will really come alive. That grass will come through this hay like crazy in areas where it's a little thicker than I want and I think that it's a little slower popping through then I may come through here with a pitchfork and just scatter this out. But I found that that typically isn't necessary. This little clump right here certainly uh, may need a little help. But it's not bad and it'll it'll come through that in short order but it's it's certainly thicker than you'd you would want. Um, so we just scatter that out and let that decompose. But we got really good manure distribution. You can see all the all the manure piles here. And once we start getting a little bit of warmth, then the uh, dung beetles and other things that scatter this manure will really kick into gear. So you can see here, there's, there's grass starting to peek up through this stuff already. Um, and this, this carbon, this organic matter, really will nurture this grass and really help it to come on. So I just wanted to show you what that looked like. Um, I'll do my best to maybe make a short update video here about April 15th. Um, maybe a little bit later to show you what this little hillside looks like and you will absolutely be amazed assuming we're getting the rainfall that we typically get and need. And the other thing I wanted to talk to you about was I have fed just rolls in hay rings and when you do that you've got to scatter that hay at the bottom of that ring. It's, it's too dense and too thick for the grass to grow up through it. And so you'll have a, a bare spot there, just, just this mat of decomposing hay that will take typically, in, at least in this country, about two years before you start to get any grass growth through there. So no question, unrolling the hay is 
much, much better. It really uh, kickstarts your ground. And in this country, this sandy loam soil just doesn't have much nutritive uh, kick to it. And so I'm trying to gradually improve that. And so I unroll hay in different spots every year and try to concentrate on the areas that I think that I need to do the best I can to, to get a little bit of a jump on. So with that, I'm going to sign off. I certainly thank you for watching and for riding along with me. And I hope you have a great winter day and it's warm where you are. Take care. <laughs>